Week three of the fantasy baseball season, and this season so far it's can't come pretty quick and going pretty quick that we're in week three already. But here's a few hitters on the waiver wire that I would look to add this week. The first guy's Jazz Chisholm Jr. and the Miami Marlins. So Chisholm Jr., he was a sleeper coming into the season for most fantasy owners, and he qualifies at second and shortstop. And so far in the early going, he's 13 for 40 from the plate. Three home runs, six RBIs, three stolen bases, eight runs scored with a 325 batting average, and a 451 on base percentage. So Chisholm Jr., he's shown some surprising power, as well as obviously the speed here for this Miami Marlin team. And the last few games, he's really played well with Chisholm Jr., and his percentages jumped them 12% already. In the last couple days here. And he's only available in 34% of fantasy leagues. So if you missed out on him. And he's still out there. I would go out there and pick him up. Before he's almost 90% owned. In the next couple days. April 16th versus San Francisco. 2 for 3 with a home run in that ball game. April 17th versus the Giants. 2 for 3 with 2 runs. And yesterday 1 for 3 in that one. So Chisholm Jr. hit him pretty much. Every game this season so far for this Miami Marlin team. And he's an electric young player here for this Marlin team that don't have much to look forward to most likely this season. So right now I would go out there and add him. And he qualifies at second and shortstop. The next hit is Adam Frazier of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So Adam Frazier, we know he's good for a good batting average and decent run scoring player. So Adam Frazier right now in fantasy on the season he's ranked 74th in the early going he's 18 for 59 from the plate no home runs nine rbis one stolen base a 305 batting average and a 400 on base percentage with eight runs scored so adam frazier he's known for getting hits he's known for having a good on base percentage and a low strikeout rate and right now he bats either first or seventh depending a lefty or righty in the pitching rotation Versus the Pirate offense. And he's played pretty well this season. Is Frazier. And right now he qualifies in fantasy baseball. For second base in outfield. Which is pretty decent versatility. So if you need some hitting. And some on base. He's definitely a guy to go out there and get in the last few games. For Frazier. April 16th at Milwaukee. 2 for 5. With a run in 2 RBIs. April 17th at Milwaukee. 2 for 4. And then yesterday. Versus the Brewers, 1 for 5 with a run. So it seems like pretty much every game he's getting a hit or two with Frazier. And he's available in 82% of fantasy leagues. And right now, I would go out there and add him if you need some batting average run scored and on base percentage. The next hitter is Zach McKintry of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So McKintry, he's came out of nowhere pretty much this season here for this Dodge team as this outfielder. And now he's been starting at different positions as well. On Friday, he started at second base of the Dodgers. They're looking to get McKintree's in the lineup any way they can this season. And on the season so far, he's ranked 91 in the fantasy baseball. 15 for 47. Three home runs, 13 RBI, seven runs scored, a nice 319 batting average, and a 353 on base. So this guy's impressing this Dodger front office. And Dave Roberts, he's trying to get this kid in the lineup, like I mentioned, every day. And the good thing is he started the last four out of five games here for this Dodger team. April 16th at San Diego, 3 for 6 with two RBIs. April 17th, 0 for 3 with a run scored. And then yesterday at San Diego, 1 for 1 in a pinch hit appearance. So now this team, they'll go to Seattle. Where obviously they'll be the DH here the next two games for the Dodgers. So McKintree, he'll definitely be them in the lineup. And he's impressive so far with the average and some pop. And he's still available in 58% of fantasy leagues. But right now his percentage is soaring up. So if I'm an owner who needs some outfield help, I would definitely go out there and get McKintree. The next hitter is Jed Lowry of the Oakland Athletics. So Jed Lowry, the last two seasons, it's been a train wreck for him. When he signed the two-year, $20 million deal with the New York Mets with Jed Lowry. And he just couldn't get on the field. I think he played five games in the last two seasons. But this offseason, he went back to Oakland where he had an all-star appearance for them a few seasons ago. And on the season, he's ranked 42 is Jed Lowry. 18 for 54 from the plate. Two home runs, 12 RBIs, a 333 Batting average of 410 on base with 10 runs scored. So Lowry, he's back to his old self here, back in Oakland. 
and he only qualifies obviously at second base. And Lowry, he's available only in 48% of fantasy leagues. His ownership has gone up a lot this season, and it's going up as we speak in the last week or two with Lowry. And a player who I thought wouldn't even be on the radar this season was he the field much. He's been a mainstay once again in Oakland. And right now, he could be a good player, especially for second base, which is a weak position for the most part in fantasy, for fantasy owners. So if Lowry's still out there, I would go out there and get him. He's going to give you the average, like I said. He's playing every day, which is pretty impressive to me compared to the last two seasons where he couldn't get on the field and maybe Oakland's just the only place where he could produce, and he definitely is right now. The next play is Joey Wendell of the Tampa Bay Rays. So Joey Wendell, he was on the waiver wire video last week for players to add, and he's going to be on it once again this week, and his ownership has jumped up a lot from last week to this week, going up 17%, so he's available in 50% of fantasy leagues. And so far on the season, he's ranked 54th as Joey Wendell, 17 for 50 from the plate. Three home runs, 11 RBIs, a 340 batting average with a 365 on base percentage and 11 runs scored. And this guy, he qualifies at second, third, and short. So that's great versatility, especially for an infielder here in fantasy baseball. And he's getting an everyday opportunity finally here with the Tampa Bay Rays. And he was a big-time prospect a few seasons ago, but he just fell out of favor. But right now... Everything's coming together for Wendell, and obviously this Tampa Bay Ray team that just swept the Yankees, April 16th at New York, 3-for-5 with two runs, April 17th, 1-for-4 with a homer and two RBIs, and then yesterday where they completed the sweep at the Yankees, Wendell 2-for-3 with a home run and two runs scored, so Wendell, he's showing pop early in the season. The batting average is up there, and he's scoring runs with 11, which is pretty impressive here in the first couple weeks of the season. So Joey Wendell, if he's still out there in your leagues, like he's available in 50%, like I mentioned, definitely go out there and get him with his versatility and him putting the ball in play and hitting. He's definitely a big ad this week. The next hit is Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. And Nimmo, one of the only few bright spots on this New York Mets offense so far in the early going. So Nimmo... He's ranked 53rd on the season in fantasy baseball, 17 for 38. No home runs, four RBIs, two stolen bases, a 447 batting average, a 543 on base, and five runs scored. So he's the anchor to this Met offense. He's batting first pretty much every day, and for the most part, he's been in there versus lefties, even though I know five or six Met ball games have been canceled because of post moments. So far in the early going, so Brandon Nimmo, the last three games, April 14th versus Philly, 3 for 5 with a run, April 17th in the double header at the Rockies, 3 for 6 with a run, and yesterday versus the Rockies, 1 for 4 with a stolen base, so Brandon Nimmo so far this season, every game he's played in, he's got a hit, and this guy, he's just a hit machine, and he hustles, and he finds a way to get on base, he takes a lot of pitches, he finds a way, and he's a catalyst to this Met team, even though they're not driving in a lot of runs right now. But Nimmo definitely worth an ad this week in fantasy, and he's available in 54% of fantasy leagues. The next hit is Colin Moran of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So Moran, he was on the list last week as an ad, and he's going to be on it once again here. Moran, he has good versatility as well. He qualifies at first, second, and third base in fantasy. And so far in the early going, he's ranked 121. 17 for 57 from the plate, 4 home runs, 13 RBIs, a 298 batting average, and a 385 on base percentage with 8 runs scored. So Moran, he's in the middle of this Pirate lineup, which isn't saying much. This Pirate team, it's going to be a tough season for them, but Moran batting cleanup, and he's showing power, and he's hitting for a pretty decent average and a good on base percentage. April 16th at Milwaukee, 1 for 3 with a home run. April 17th, 0 for 4, and then yesterday versus the Brew Crew, 2 for 5 with a home run and 4 RBI. So Moran, he's really driving the ball. He's getting every opportunity, and he's the big cleanup hitter here for this Pittsburgh Pirate team. And he's available in 55% of fantasy leagues. So a guy who could play first, second, and third is so, is so great and valuable for fantasy. And I would go out there and get Moran right now before it's too late. The next hit is Adam Duvall. 
of the Miami Marlins. So last season, Duvall, he had a monster season in the 60-game year for the Atlanta Braves. But the Braves decided not to bring him back. And Duvall, he had 16 home runs in the shortened season. And so far in the early going, it hasn't been that great of a year from him. But we've seen the power as well. 318 he's ranked on the year. 11 of 49 from the plate. Four home runs. 11 RBIs, 8 runs scored, only a 224 batting average, and a 269 on base. So last season for Adam Duvall, he was only a 237 hitter. But if you need some power in RBIs, he's definitely worth an add this week. And last week he had a huge game on April 13th, 4 for 5 in that one, with 2 home runs, 7 RBIs, and a 4 runs scored in that. But the last few games he's quieted down. A little is Duvall. April 16th versus San Francisco, 0 for 4. April 17th versus San Francisco, 1 for 6 with an RBI in a run. And then yesterday, 0 for 3. But he's the fifth or fourth or fifth hitter in this Miami Marlins offense. And right now, they just need some bats in the lineup. And that's what Duvall is going to provide for this team. We know he's got some pop and he's going to get an opportunity. So if you need some power, on your fantasy team. He's definitely a good add and he's available in 65% of fantasy leagues. So I look to add Duvall this week. The next batter is Adam Eaton of the Chicago White Sox. So Adam Eaton, he was on the White Sox a few seasons ago. And then he got traded to the Washington Nationals. And now this offseason, he did play seasons with Washington. He signed the cheap deal here with the White Sox. And on the season, he's ranked 61st on the year in fantasy baseball. 13 for 52 from the plate. Three home runs, 11 RBIs, a stolen base, 12 runs scored, a 250 batting average, but a 371 on base, which is pretty valuable right now in fantasy baseball. So Eaton, he's finding ways to get on base. He's batting second each and every day right now. For this Chicago White Sox team. And he's scoring a lot of runs so far. With 12 in the early going. April 17th at Boston. 1 for 3 with a run in an RBI. April 18th at Boston. 0 for 3. And today the special 11-15 ball game. 1 for 2 so far with an RBI. So Adam Eaton. He's playing well. He's staying healthy. And he's going to help fantasy owners. in batting average run scored. And on base percentage for the most part. And that's a pretty good add. And he's available in 49% of fantasy leagues. And the final hitter I would look to add this week on waivers is Wilson Ramos of the Detroit Tigers. So Wilson Ramos, he's been a power hitter, is the understatement right now to start the season. On the season, he's ranked 224 on the year, is Ramos. 12 for 51. For those hits have been home runs for Ramos. Six home runs. 8 RBIs, 7 runs scored, a 235 batting average, which obviously isn't good, and a 291 on base. But right now, Ramos, he's at a catcher position that's pretty weak in fantasy baseball. There's only about 5 or 6 good catches this season in fantasy baseball. And why not go out there and get Ramos? He's top 5 in home runs already in the major leagues. I know he's only had 12 hits with 6 of them home runs, and it could be fluky, but right now... I would go out there and get him, especially, like I said, he's a catcher. He's available in 46% of fantasy leagues. And the last couple games for Ramos, April 16th at Oakland, 1 for 3. April 17th at Oakland, 0 for 4. And yesterday at Oakland, 1 for 4. So right now, the Tigers, they'll have the day off today. And then they start a three-game set in Detroit versus the Pittsburgh Pirates, where I think Ramos could get back on the home run board. Once again here, so that's a few hitties. I would look to add on the waiver wire here in week three of the fantasy baseball season.